Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're going to be discussing the standing submissions of Judo. Throughout the years, the rules have changed dramatically. The consensus was always the same. You should get it to the ground, and from there, you should lock it. So, sometimes you might see a demonstration of a wakigatame or a haragatame, but it's all in kata, but in randori, it has to be on the ground. So, the first submission that we're going to be looking at is wakigatame and how the rules have changed around it. So, in kata form, as you see here, it's a standing lock and you do it. It's great for self-defense, but in randori, of course, this is not uh, permissible. I am in favor of this if Uke has his knees on the ground and we're going to be looking at that later on. So here you can see you lock with your armpit straightening the arm. So uh, in the past someone pointed out that you can actually dive it through or take it to the ground if only one arm is gripping the arm while the other is just uh, laying its weight on it. Uh, here this Saito example uh, actually dislocated his elbow against Cho of Korea in the final of the world championships so back then i believe it was legal with the one arm rule but after that it became hansokumake immediately here this is a great example so this is saito but this time he is performing it so it's a failed uchimata where the uke actually um, liberates the sleeve hand but since it was right versus left the arm got tangled and saito got use of it and applied Wakigatame. So this is really good, but in terms of safety, it's very debatable. But nonetheless, it's a very good transition from the stand up into a straight lock. Now, here let's take a look at a Hansokumake or a elimination, penalty elimination directly applied. It's absolutely brutal with both hands, immediately dives. So, I love how Endo is one of the referees deciding if this is uh, safe <laughs> or, or not. Uh, Sumio Endo produced some of the most ruthless submissions and we're gonna see them. So here you see both hands locking it and diving. Now, let's go back to the 70s. This is Endo. Uh, lifts Ochimata's leg to unbalance and then dives through with Waki Getame. So someone pointed out that during that period, as I mentioned earlier, that Waki Getame was permissible from the stand-up uh, if only one arm is gripping, as you see here. The, the other one is just gripping sleeve, but you only have one arm, but still it is incredibly dangerous. Um, this is a very recent example of a one arm sword at Tsurigomikoshi where M. Chengrim's arm was actually caught and it was actually won by Hanso Kumake. It is very dangerous even with the one arm rule. Now, if I were to propose something is the um, this. So you chop down either with Tayotoshi or like a Kochigari and from there you proceed to do either the strangle as you see Krista de Gucci do or Haragatame, Wakigatame, etc. But they need to be on both knees and from there you can do it. So here, this is uh, the rate, the rules have changed. Now they both have to be on the ground. But here, uh, if Uke is considered a Newaza, you can lock them. But I don't think that's the rule anymore. But this is something that I would condone if you want to dive with the one arm rule thing. You can if they are on both knees because the impact is far less. Uh, there so if you want to do the one arm rule thing uh, there should be a newaza at least uke on both knees here it's a standing ude garami so you grip it from stand up then you take it to the ground and lock it i don't know if it's permissible today but uh, it is still be considered dangerous uh, here from an osotogari finished as an ude garami so uh, it's hard to lock a standing ude garami because they can move and it's all about the elbow uh, being away from the, its axis. So here it's a standing choke, so you get a cross choke or a juji jime. And from there you sacrifice yourself 
and you get like what we call a baseball bat choke. Now, one reason I will never condone flying Yuri Gatame is it can seriously end not only your career but your life. Here, you are literally taking yourself off the ground, flipping yourself upside down and dropping. The risk is absolutely huge. From what I heard, the man here in this example became a tetraplegic. So one thing I will never condone from the stand-up is the flying Juji Gatame or the flying armbar. But when it comes to Waki Gatame, Hara Gatame, and the one-arm rule thing that you saw in the past in the 70s and how they got away with it, um, if they are on their knees, you want to apply it. Maybe it's debatable, but still nonetheless hazardous. Uh, but uh, if you want to lock where Uke is on both knees, like you saw with Denisov, I'm all for it. Uh, the Ude Garami thing, uh, maybe also as well, I would condone it. But the flying armbar, I would never condone it. It can end in not only your career, but your life. And again, you are taking yourself off the ground, flipping yourself upside down and dropping. So much can go wrong. Now, Tomoe Nage turned into Juji Gatame. That's great. But the flying armbar, I'm very much against it. Flying triangle as well. You can be power bombed easily and have your career ended and your walking abilities probably as well. Or brain capacity. So there is just so much to lose with flying armbars and flying uh, triangles. So I will never condone them. Even like as you saw on a wrestling mat and still the man was limp instantly. So all the others, you can make so many rules around them to bring them back, make them more spectator friendly, more action based, uh, great for self defense. Like the, if they're bo on both knees, you can do a standing lock. I have no problem with it. Um, if you want to drop down after an attack, they also should be on both knees, like a failed Uchimata. And then from there, you can do a Waki Gatame or a Haragatame. So, um, this is mainly it. If you have anything else to add, please uh, let me know down below. This is a very controversial subject, I understand. And so many people can make up so many rules around it. But uh, at least if you want to do something in the stand-up, at least have Uke's knees both on the ground. Because if both of them, both parties went to the ground, it's far less impactful in my opinion. And that was the rule until very recently. So now today it's not anymore. But the Denisov uh, example is great. If you want to add also the one arm rule thing for the Waki Gatame, again, it should be on both knees. One party should be in Neiwaza. The standing choke drops down. I'm all for it because you cannot have a very hurtful impact and it's great. Uh, also, the Ude Garami, you can make a lot of rules around it, keep it safe and also action filled. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.